Hey, everybody, this is Big Will here again. Uh, for those of you joining in, uh, you probably know that I did this exact video before with a slightly less bearded fellow named John. And when we when I started to watch it on the replay, I noticed a lot of ch ch clicking and other weird stuff. And it, it made me not want to watch it. So I deleted it. And rather than pestering John again, uh, Alec here, he helped me figure out how to not have that happen. And he said he'd join as we redo this video where I live submit a CGC order and a CBCS order. So we're going to go through it both, both of them live. And if you have any questions or anything, let us know in the chat. Or if you have any questions and you're watching this on replay, Put it in the comments section. I'm sure Alec or I will do the best we can to answer your questions. And then you have John, you have TJ the Slab Dragon, there's Reggie Collects, there's a whole bunch of people that I can't list that could help you out in a situation like this if you're not exactly sure how to go about getting your books graded, assuming you've already made the decision that you want to. Now, speaking of that, Alec, First off, why don't you introduce yourself? Not that everyone probably already knows you, but still. Oh, I don't want to assume that. Hi, my name is Alec. I have a channel called White Will Comics. And uh, like Bill, Big Will said, I will do my best to try to answer your questions and not just make jokes. <laughs> Although I'm okay with either. Okay. But, it depends on who's asking them then. Yeah, true. But uh, one thing we should probably do is figure out how exactly do you go about choosing what is going to be slabbed? Because we were talking about that right before we went on. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you one example of um, one reason I get something slapped. So I got this as an AOK -okay, um, a while back from I Got Issues uh, because they were both big Ghost Rider fans, and he sent me this Marvel Spotlight. Uh, I knew it was a really low grade. I thought it was going to be 1.8, so I was pleasantly surprised to have it come back at 2.5. Um, but the grade was less important to me than just getting it slabbed and protected and, and archived. Um, so in this case, it did. the condition didn't matter, the cost didn't matter. This was just getting graded because uh, I wanted to preserve it better. Now, if it's something more modern um, where you know nine eights are easier to get and stuff like that uh, I basically use a kind of a mathematic formula to decide if it's worth it so it, it doesn't really matter what I paid for the book um, what I do is I take the cost of what I or the price what I could sell it for uh, at near mint let's say so I look on eBay and uh, some other resources and decide, okay, let's say, for example, I could sell this book for $100 near mint. And then you take the cost of grading, which let's say, for example, is about 30 bucks. So um, if the price of the book uh, in any given grade, let's say a 9.4, 9.6, if I think it's a 9.8, but maybe it's a 9.6, or I think it's a 9.6, maybe it's a 9.4, if the cost unless I can make money on the book plus the grading fee. So a lot of books like near mint, especially for modern stuff, near mint raw in a nine, four go for the same. If not, sometimes a nine, four goes for less. So if I'm going to lose money by getting something graded and turn it into a nine, four, I'm not going to take the chance. But if something is going to be a profit, no matter what, not saying I'm necessarily going to sell all these books, but why am I going to grade something and take a loss on it? Does that make sense? Yeah. And, so uh, that's my that's my crazy logical yeah. or or how, illogical. How I do it is there's value and value and sentimental value. If the sentimental yeah. value is such that I want the thing graded and I want it protected then obviously I'm going to get it graded. It really doesn't matter how much it 
cost to a degree and I'm not worried about reselling it, although I might in the future. I don't plan on it. So it, it really doesn't matter about value. I just want it protected. I want it slapped. And then there's value where what I paid for the book plus grading costs, if I believe the grade to be such that it is higher than those two numbers combined, then I'll also get it graded. And that's for speculation and investment purposes. Obviously, if it's just going into the PC, that's more of a sentimental thing. But I also try and get the best deal that I can. And that's how I go about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't I think, I think about I think it. We are pretty, pretty, pretty similar thought processes. I just am um, talking about it uh, more insanely. And you, you put it much more, much more succinctly and, and understandably. <laughs> Okay, but uh, I was uh, going to say I forgot earlier, but we have uh, comics for all people in the house. Old Wolf joined us, and uh, some dude named Big Will. Oh wait, that's me. I'm in here. Mm -hmm. uh, DK Comics and Cosplay. They were in the previous show. This is a redo because the replay kind of sucked. So it'll yeah, be. There was, was some audio issues. Yeah, hopefully we fixed all that though. So, Alec, what do you say we just go right on in here? Yeah, let's do it. Figure this thing out. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go on to the CGC page. So, Alec, you'll have to be my eyes for the chat. You got it. Anyway, so this is what it is when you first get on here. You scroll down. You can uh, verify CGC certification. What's this? Well, every CGC book has a serial number on it. And if you input that serial number here, it will tell you if it is the correct book, the correct grade, and an actual CGC slab. It'll also let you know if someone's put a different label in to make a bad book a much higher grade and vice versa. And it is, if you're in doubt, use the CGC verification tab here. And anyone can use this as long as you have access to the website. And then at the bottom here, we have the CGC registry, which I do not do. Uh, TJ, the Slab Dragon Watson, will be the person you'd want to go talk to about the CGC registry as far as people on YouTube that I know of, because I don't know about it. CGC census right here in the middle, well, obviously that's just a census of every book that they've ever graded. Let you know how many, how many there are in each category, whether it be qualified, universal, uh, restored, all of that. And then, of course, you have the submit tab right here where you can submit your books in for grading. And after you've paid whatever you're going to pay for your membership, what you would do is you would go to the submit tab and you want to go to submission forms. Now, this screen will pop up. And one thing that I did not show last time that I will show this time is if you go to view status, it lets you know everything you have done. Yeah. For example, right here, this num number, the 2067696 submission number right here where my mouse is, that is one I've already received back. I had a declared value of $200 on it. I fast tracked it and it was value, which means it was older than uh, 1975. And if I click on this red number, it uh, should show I'm you see the whole order and see all of your, uh... all my information here for this book. It was a Batman 181 and uh, I got a 1.8 grade off white. Not the best grade, but it's an investment book. So I don't plan on touching it for a long time. And you should be able to see the graders notes right there. Heavy creasing to cover, heavy tears to cover, piece out right top of pages, two effects story. Uh, did, I, did that open in a new window? Cause we can't, I can't see that. You can't see the graders notes? Uh, I'm still on the screen that shows all of your orders. Oh, okay. So if that, opened, bad, in, if you, if that opened in a new window, you might be sharing a specific window right now. Yeah, I am. That, that's the only bad thing about the share screen is sometimes if you don't have it, it can be the weird tab. Yeah. Anyway, but well, here it is. Here's what I was looking at. Anyway, so it has my submission number, all, right. all the information about the book, including what I got for the grade, 1.8 off-white. 
if I click the graders notes. And you, you paid for the graders notes for these? No. Graders notes come free if you send the book in to get graded. For a CGC? Now, oh, really? Yes. Now, if you want a hard oh, copy. Oh, yes. Yes, you you're right. Pay, yeah, I'm sorry. But for if online. You, if you get a book from somewhere else and you want the graders notes. Right. You, know, you got to pay $5 for a book you didn't send in. But if you sent the book in, you have free graders notes online only. And that, that's not the case for CBCS. CBCS has a QR code on the back of all the labels that you can scan and any you can right. check the greatest notes on any book. Right. So it's 100% uh, free on the CBCS. And we'll get to that when we get to it. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. And uh, for those of you wondering, if you were to call CGC and give them this highlighted number, they would tell you the status of the order. Anybody, Alec here, could call up on my order if he had that number and find out the status. But to get any personal information, you would have to prove that you're me. So it wouldn't work there. But anybody with a submission number can find out the status of that particular order. So next thing we do is go back to the submission forms. And instead of clicking the view status, we go to comics and magazines, online form, because we want to submit books for grading. And this should open a new tab. Yes, it is opening a new tab. So let me share the new tab. And like I said, if anyone has any questions or anything, please feel free to ask them. And uh, Alec, jump in with anything you might want to know or anything you think someone else might want to know. Yeah. That. So I, I've done this process a few times and I, I do have some things to, to mention, but uh, they are coming up uh, okay. once you get to this point. So. so you can see the submission type here. We're wanting comic books. So we would go with comic. Then it's going to go to this page here. Which do you want to do? Do you want to mail in to headquarters or drop off at a show? Well, we're going to mail in. That's already clicked for you. Then we choose what services we're doing. I don't have a great, uh, excuse me, I don't have a presser nearby that I could send books to. And I also just don't like the idea of having to send them to someone to press them. Hopefully they do a good job, send them back, then send them all the way back to see. It's just a mess. So yeah. I get rating and I get pressing. Uh, have you ever done the quick press? Uh, yes, I've done the quick press and I can tell you all never, never do the quick press. It is what it says it is. It is a quick press. They will literally put the book in the press sometimes for less than 24 hours. Books can lose the pressing that they did receive in a quick press and pops back out. And a lot yeah. of the defects that you get out with a normal press, some of them won't get out with a quick press. Absolutely. I, I will say this for quick press. If it's a modern book that has a slight defect that needs to be pressed. Um, it, I've had luck with it. If it is anything older that ha needs some attention, absolutely, it's not going to do the job for you. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. And anyway, once you click that information in, you go to where you put in the books you're going to do. I actually have three books that I'm going to submit. So uh, the first one here is Wolverine number 10. And you'll notice most of the CGC things here will fill in for you if you just start it. So Wolverine, it gives me the option for Marvel. Issue number, it's number 10. Issue date. If you don't know the issue date, but you do know it's a first print like I know mine is, I go with the oldest date it lists. So this would be 889. So this is one thing I wanted to talk about is the issue date. I've noticed that there are some discrepancies in what they consider the issue date is and what I have looked up as being the actual release date by like sometimes months. Yes, I have noticed that myself. That's why if I have a first print, I just go with whatever they say is the oldest because when you try and input your own, it doesn't take. Right. Um, but my question is, and I don't know if anybody knows this, if you put the wrong date in, will they still look at the book and correct it? As far as I know, yes, because I've had to put in 
uh, when I did my rags number one that didn't have a publisher, mm -hmm. I, I had to figure out how to put that in. And uh, anyway, the way I did it was technically wrong. But when the book came back to me, they had the information correct. Yeah. So anyway, now, you're, go ahead. Uh, that that is a good question for something like that, where if you were trying to submit something that has not ever been submitted before, for example, um, and you try to type in a title for something that doesn't exist, how do you do you know how you go about doing that? Right now, for rags, it had a version from Antarctic oh, Press that right. would be in had, the system. You had so, the Kickstarter version, right? Right. So, so I didn't have to worry about that. But if it's absolutely has nothing in the system, I would write on your order form that you print out to ship it, what it all is, and explain yourself. That way, you're beyond the shadow of a doubt. You put it all on them to do the mm -hmm. due diligence. Yeah, because for example. Uh, I'm not encouraging or suggesting that he does this, but TJ keeps saying he's going to slab uh, missing pieces, my comic. So I'm wondering when he goes to submit that and he types in the title and nothing exists, because you said like if you put, you can't type in the issue date. So what happens at that point? Right. I don't know. And now here's my question. Does your particular printed version of your comic that you did hmm. does it have a frontispiece where you have like uh the the copyright uh, the date and all that inside like the front cover or first page yep so they would be able to glean the information from there if they don't have it in their system sure but will, will it let you submit it without that information like if, if it won't let you put in the issue date well Every book that's never been submitted before has to go through that. So I, I would yeah. say yes, because there's a bunch of comics that are yeah, weird. I, that. Right. I would assume so, too. I just have never tried doing that, so I'm just curious. Right. Anyway. So once we get our issue date in, there is no variant for Wolverine 10 that I'm aware of, so I don't have to worry about that. It always puts United States. If you're in the United States, you can change that if needed. I don't ever do. Now, the declared value, a lot of people have different views on this. Yeah, I'm it, curious it, to see what you have The declared value is for your return shipping, and it is possibly for the value of the book while it's at CGC. I don't know for sure on that one, but I do know 100% for sure it is going to affect your return shipping cost. Yeah, now you have to charge you more right. for insurance. Now, I have a collectibles insurance and I double checked my policy from things that were said and questions asked on the earlier stream I did with John and I double triple checked. Uh, I am covered going to CGC. I have full coverage coming from CGC and my books are fully covered while at CGC. So because of that, to get the cheapest possible shipping, I put in $1 is my declared value. Now, what is that? Uh, what does that cost you per year? Uh, for my in, uh, insurance, yeah. I have a ten thousand dollar policy, which my collection isn't halfway there yet, but it, yeah. it will be at some point. But my ten thousand dollar policy costs me seventy eight dollars annually. Yeah, that's, I mean that's not a lot. Um, so interestingly, uh, T TJ has a similar. Uh, thought process as you. And I don't know if he has the insurance portion of it, but he kind of says put a lower value so you save on return shipping. When I submitted a book in person that my uh, Catwoman Jay Lee sketch, which is right there, um, and I did that in person because it was witnessed, the people at CGC said, always put the maximum value it allows you to put. Now, they don't make any extra money because they don't, they're not going to overcharge you more than what they pay for return shipping. So it's not like they would tell you that so they can nickel and dime you. I think that their thought process is put the most you can put so that if something does happen, you get your maximum value back. So if you don't have something like insurance, that is something to consider because right. even if a book's worth $20 and you put the declared value at 500 and you insure that at 500, I, I don't know exactly how the insurance works to the post office. Well, uh, my, my separate insurance covers me, so I don't have to worry about it. But what I told John is my view of that, since it does affect your cost somewhat, 
I would not lose money. In other words, if a book is worth $200, but you paid $20 for it and your grading and everything else is going to cost $40, that's $60 total. I put like $70 in your declared value. That way you don't lose money, but you're also getting as cheap a shipping service as you can yeah. possibly get. Sure. I mean, you, you don't lose money out of your pocket, but you lose potential money, possibly. Right. Now, so once you, it, it is, it, you know, the chances of something happening, I don't know, but I'm just, you know, it's, it's an interesting debate that people really have very different opinions on. Yes, it is. But anyway, as you fill out all of that information, what your book is, you go to the next page, which is this one here. And uh, I'm getting, it is a modern book, Wolverine 10 is, so I will be getting modern grading. I will not be fast tracking, which cuts the time in half. Uh, so and it, it, does, it does tell you right there what the current turnaround time is as well. Yes, it's 25 business days. So I'm going to go to the next, and then we go to grading here, or excuse me, pressing. And if you click modern grading and you go to pressing, it'll already have that clicked for you. You don't have to worry about it. It's $12. Uh, it's six dollars to fast track, but you cannot fast track one without fast tracking right. the other. Yeah, your your whole kit and caboodle has to be fast tracked. Now, right. not for your whole order, but per book. Right. So I'm. It's seventy five business days, which sucks, monkey balls. But <laughs> oh well, I don't now, have to have this book back at a certain time, so I'm okay with that. So I'm doing the plain Jane, no fast track on the pressing. And then we go to add to cart. Because have you ever, have you ever considered doing any custom labels? Uh, no, I don't want any of the custom labels. But for those of you that haven't seen them, they have a spot. All of these are $5 in addition to everything else if you want them on your CGC slab. You have the Spider Man here, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, all the Avengers, or well, the four big Avengers anyway, uh, Daredevil, the Hulk, Thor, Venom. And uh, it doesn't show it right here for some reason, but this is the New York City Amazing Spider-Man, which uh, I know NY, Comic Books NYC did on his Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, both of those, he put this on there and it looks great. It's New York City in the background with Spider-Man. Is it this one? Uh, it's something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, I've never done any of those either. And those actually, for those uh, who may be watching who aren't haven't ever done this before, haven't looked at them, those do change. So Ooh. they aren't always the exact same option. Right. Uh, looks like we have a question here. Does the modern category include 1975 books? It includes 1975 and up, in other words, younger is considered modern. Uh, they don't consider Bronze Age or Copper Age as in existence with CGC. It's modern, 75 and up, and everything else. Yeah, I think that has to do with mostly the sizing of the books um, because it's what type of encapsulation they need to use and how much plastic they need to use to do that. And that's why it changes the cost a lot. Right. Looks like we got a few uh, people that Uh, froze there for a second but you're good so yeah I, i've never done the custom labels either um i know john got the captain marvel on his eventually spider-man for me it's just a matter of like number one i don't want to spend the extra money because i'm cheap yeah but number two um, i also like uniformity and so even like yellow labels i'm not a huge fan of because or gold labels whatever just because like I want everything as even as possible. Right. So I've added that to cart. Now we're going to put in my second book, and it is one I got from you, actually, Alec. Okay. Black Science One. I was in one of those uh, big boxes, right? Right. And uh, it's the standard cover. And again, like I said before, with my insurance stuff, I just put a dollar 
for the declared. And because I am doing the exact same grading and pressing tier, I can just click here to apply same tier and I don't have to go through all that clicking again. Right. And however, if a book has any sort of other requirements, if you put in information, let's say it's pre-1975 or it's a variant or, you know, there are certain things that they will not allow you to apply that same tier for. Right. So uh, my next book is New Teen Titans 23. Has DC Comics. Issue 23, it's from 82. Now it's a Mark Jeweler. Now oh, when you have a variant that is recognized by CGC, you put it in this block here. And if you have something that they notate like the Mark Jeweler insert, you put that here. Now, if you put it here and they do not recognize it, it doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't help you either. Right. Uh, for example, newsstands, I know CBCS recognized those, um, CGC does not. Yes. So it would not do any good to put newsstand on there. Uh, Kachung asks, does the 20 business days of grading and 70 days of pressing accumulate for a longer total time? Yes, it is 20 days, 25 days for grading and 70 whatever days for pressing. Those are individual time, so it would come out to about between 90 and 100 business days. Yes, and those are business days. So you're talking quickest time without fast track. I'm looking at at least, what, four months? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Now, if you'll notice, I have six books here. That's because we did these earlier today. So I'm going to delete those because I don't need to send but one set in. And I will finish doing all my personal information later. But what I'm gonna do now is stop sharing this screen. That way I can go to the checkout and it has all your address information and all. And then I go to the next page and I'm gonna share it and it has all your shipping information on it. So let me share this. <laughs> TJ said, I'm at work, but my ears were burning. We're talking about CGC. <laughs> yep. So anyway, this is the shipping. Uh, you have $18 for UPS, $18 for FedEx, and the United States Postal Service is $38. Um, one of the reasons that it is $38 is because the USPS will register and insure your books. Even if you have a half a million dollars worth, you can get half a million dollars worth of insurance if you so choose to do that. UPS and FedEx both only do $100 of maximum insurance and that's it. But it's a lot cheaper too. So take your risk if you want or get some insurance and cover your butt like I do. And FedEx, UPS, they're really about the same, but some areas of the country, one's better than the other and some areas of the country, one operates and one doesn't. I can do either one, but around here where I'm from, uh, UPS is the better company, so I'm. that's why I clicked UPS. So that's yeah. the one I would be using. I, I've had issues with all three shipping companies. So, I mean, for me, there's, there's no right choice. <laughs> and uh, from here, if I were to click next, it would go to information for writing a check, doing the money order, credit card stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this screen because that's it for the CGC. So do we need to, before we try and do CBCS, man, do we need to say so, anything to uh, thing, Bake the Snake said, I, I insured a package once from UPS for $500. So I don't know if that is some extra thing that he, if UPS does that outside of the, the norm or if, if CGC cannot do that, I don't know, but interesting. Well, if you, if you don't have insurance that covers <laughs> you already, then if that's how much your books are worth, then yeah, do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like JP's uh, thing here. Yes, we are redoing it because it had bad audio. You probably heard the clicking and all when you watched it. So uh, I'm doing it again with a, a little bit more hair this time on the other side of the screen. 
Uh, Kachung asks, what about modern books that exceed $200? There, so that two hundred dollars is not a cap for modern books. It is a cap for the t that the modern tier grading. So you can grade I'm it. Just, I'm just going to show the whole thing, Alex. I'm going to go yeah. back to sharing, and uh, I will show all the options so everyone won't get any confusion here. <clears throat> okay, so I've I've done all of this. So let me back back. Back to submission form. Let's see. Oh, no, wait, I gotta stop sharing this and go to CGC brand new. Okay, well, I'll do that. Go ahead and explain to them how there are different tiers and I'll get it pulled up right here and we can look sure. at it. So there are tiers that, are, that have different turnaround times and different values and different errors. So certain errors you have to pick older tiers. Um, like I said, because I believe because of the size of the case and stuff like that, it differs in how they encapsulate them and it differs their, their cost. So it changes your cost. Um, but there's also tiers based on strictly speed. So uh, no, no problem at all, Kachum says, sorry, my questions are kind of basic. For people who've never done this before, it is a perfectly reasonable question. Yes. Uh, so here is the screen. This is the services and fees that they do. I have it on CGC because CGC is a completely autonomous company and CCS is a different autonomous company. They just happen to work hand in hand, use the same website and are in the same building, but you will be making two different payments. One yeah. to CCS for pressing or restoration removal or restoration, and you will make a separate payment to CGC. They are separate companies. So as we look at CGC here, this is the walkthrough is the highest tier. That this is for like your action ones, your AF fifteens, and it's uh, they don't even have a set number they charge you. It's three percent of fair market, with a minimum and a maximum that you will get charged. Uh, if you have a high grade near mint giant size X Men number one, you would want to go with the express tier, which is a maximum value of. Uh, Three thousand dollars, and it's going to cost you a hundred bucks. But it's only five days. Uh, I, when I did my one eighty one, uh, I used this tier, and it is every bit five days. Yeah. Then of course you have the standard maximum value of a thousand. And to answer your question, Kachung, if the value is over two hundred for either modern or Silver Age and older, you use this one right here the economy tier. Yeah, or, or standard, depending on if, right. if, if you're sending out like a... Yeah, I'm just saying the next one up is the yeah. economy for $400 max value. Which, and interestingly, is a longer turnaround time than modern. You mean value? Uh, both. It's 22 days for modern, 52 days for economy. Yeah, it's, so it's longer though, than uh, modern, but it's a lot shorter than value. Yeah, but even though it's a more expensive tier, it is yes. a longer turnaround. Uh, but you can make it just as fast as modern if you fast track it. And uh, then obviously, when you get past economy into standard, that's where it goes through there like a rocket ship. 15 days, five days, and same day. Yeah. And then we go to CCS for the pressing and you will get depressed when you look at the turnaround time. <laughs> Good one. Because as you can see here, 75 days for modern books, 75 days for value books, 75 days for the economy tier. And, and then of course, if you have a book valuable enough, you get fast right here. But uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's no way to really speed this up in any way that matters, even fast track on all three of these right here are 45 business days. But I will say, if you have a modern book, you must choose the modern tier for pressing if you get it pressed. Same thing with the economy and all the rest of them. They must be the same tier for grading and pressing if you have CCS press it and CGC grade it. Uh, any questions there? Or you think that pretty much shows it? 
Yeah, uh, Kachung said, okay, got it, makes sense. So high grade Batman Adventures 12 would be standard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would, I mean, if you're concerned about the uh, insurance costs, then definitely, and you'd get a much faster turnaround time, but you would be paying more out of pocket. Now, again, for a book like that, though, you're increasing the value much more than something that's only worth, you know, a Wolverine 10, you know, which is, I'm sure, a personal collection book. Um, but you know, it's not, it's not a Batman Adventures 12 where you're, um, you know, where it might be worth a thousand, 1500 bucks, depending on the grade. Uh, so it might be worth it for you to spend a little more in grading and get it, uh, you know, pressed out nice and get it back in your hands quicker. Right. And, uh, I would say, uh, one, uh, one trick that uh, you could do to help you on saving some money is unless it's a painfully obvious valuable book like uh, Hulk 181, AF 15, Action 1, GSX 1, unless it's one of those that everyone knows is really valuable, I would go with the cheaper tier so you don't have to pay as much. Just be warned, you might get bumped up if they catch it, but if they don't, you might can save some money. Like I have a, uh, my buddy, my roommate has a Batman Adventures 12 and he put it in at the maximum value of $200 tier because it's like an 8085, which is in this market, like around a $500 book or so. So if they don't catch that or bother with it because it's not that much more, he's going to get it for cheaper than if he did the $1,000 max standard tier. Right. Now, it, it's interesting because it is a declared value cost. So as you saw, when Will put in a dollar for those books, they're worth more than a dollar. But the thing is that uh, since it's for insurance, CGT doesn't want to get whacked. So if they get hit for, a, you know, 10, 15 bucks on a book because you didn't put enough in and you put up a stink and they have to you know, make up the difference because you didn't understand what that meant or whatever. Um, you know, they're not on the hook for that much. But if you put two hundred dollars on a book that's worth five grand, they're not gonna. They're gonna be like, hold on, you have to get this insured because we don't want to be on the hook for it. Would you Would you say that's an accurate representation of why they bump you up? Either that, or they just want money. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> if you put two hundred dollars. I would, they could argue that that's what you put, that's what you get. So I don't know why, but I do know that the, the basic dumbest reason is they want more money and you're supposed to do it that way. You didn't and you got caught, so you're going to have to pay a little more. So just that's a trick you can use, but use it at your own risk. So we're ready for CBCS? I'm always ready for CBCS. You, you like them, don't you? I, I like them to a point. Um, <laughs> I like them to a point myself. They, they are cheaper. Um, I personally like their labels better. I know some people disagree with that. I think they're nicer looking. Um, and uh, I guess that's about it. I, the time they were running the special where it was a 10 day turnaround, they exceeded that. But there are other times that I've submitted, they have always been well over their estimation. Right. Same, same here. And their cases yeah. are their cases are definitely flimsier than CGCs, but I've never seen any Newton rings in them. True. Now, uh, this is the main page for CBCS. Th this is just the email I use for uh, StreamYard and stuff. It's not my personal. But anyway, uh, what you do is you go up here to submit comics. And we don't have anything submitted, so we're going to have to add a comic. We're only going to do one here. What comic should we do, Alec? Uh, you got anything that needs a uh, signature verification? Yes, I do. I have a new Teen Titans number one with double signatures. Uh, I think that would be a perfect choice for CBCS because... Uh, they offer signature verification where CGC does not. Uh, th sorry, after the fact, just right. to be clear. So CGC will witness the signature and give you a gold label, but if you send in a signed book, 
you have two options. You can either take a hit on it and get a blue label with a lower value because they will consider it a defect, or you can get a green label for a qualified grade and it'll say, I like, cannot stand that green label for signatures. You get, once we do this, if you want me to go on a rant here, I can do it. <laughs> it'll, it'll say, uh, for example, uh, Michael Turner written on cover, but it will not say signed by Michael Turner because right. they, they will not verify that that is his signature or CBCS since they are owned by Beckett who have been doing signature verification for sports memorabilia for many, many years have some process where they can, uh, at least in their eyes, confidently say that it is someone's signature or it is not. So you can get a red label, which means it is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, red one is a verified, verified signature rather than a witnessed signature. Right. So what we're doing here is I got my, you, you have to know more of your information for CBCS. Uh, I put in the title, I have to put in the issue number, the year, publisher. It's not a variant, so I don't have to worry with that. It's not a pedigree, I don't have to worry. Uh, because of the signatures, I'm putting the insured value at 60 bucks. And uh, I don't need to screen it for grading. It's going to get grasped. I will not be fast passing, which is right here. It's the same thing as fast track. They just call it fast pass, I guess, to be different. I will yeah, be getting a press. So I'm going to click that. Yeah, I've never done two signatures on this book to get verified. So I have to add verified and tell them who it is. I've, I've never done pressing through CBCS. So I, I, am I have. So is a fast press similar to a quick press? Yes. So I'm adding Marv Wolfman, and I also need to add George Perez. They're the guys that signed my book. Did I misspell George? Uh, no, that's correct. Okay, good. I think it's just red because it's not capitalized, so it doesn't recognize oh, that. They'll figure it out. Uh, names here that have to be verified. It's $25 for the first verification and $15 for each additional verification. Now, if you're going to get it authenticated like you would if, uh, at CGC, you like witnessed, that's five bucks. But if you do the other, it's 25 and 15 for each edition. And you come over here and it lays it out. Now, there's also uh, something else that I'm sure you pointed out where it says encapsul encapsulation, even if verification fails. So that's where the oh, good catch. That's where the screen comes in. So you can tell it to screen, uh, and you can do this in CGC too, but not for signatures. But if you say, I don't want it. If it's lower than a 9.4, don't do it. You still have to pay a fee, but it's significantly less than what it costs to grade it. Yes. And, and so if you uh, encapsulate, even if, if verification fails, that basically means if, if you have a GSX-1 that's like a 9.8 and it's signed by Stan Lee, but you didn't know it was really Bobby Lee that signed it, <laughs> and you just wanted to go by Stan that day, and the verification fails, well, it's still a very valuable 9.8 or the signature might drop it down to a 9.6 or 9.4. So even if the verification fails and it's not a real signature, you can still get it graded by them and encapsulated. But if you don't wanna do that, in other words, if it's only worth something, if the signatures are real, then you would put do not encapsulate if the verification fails. And I got these signed myself, so I know they're gonna pass. TJ says, have you ever heard of a verification denial? Um, yes, I, I have. Really? I was gonna say, I have not, but I've yeah. not. It's on YouTube. Some guys sent in a dynamic forces that was supposedly signed by Jack Kirby and the verification failed. As it turns out, dynamic forces didn't admit it, but they think that there was a time when he was getting near the end of his life and sick that his wife actually signed some books for him and they believe that that's one that was sent in and of course the verification failed so they did not get it encapsulated 
because it was not signed by Jack Kirby. So they actually do their due diligence and do their job. Uh, Katoom says, what is grade screening? I, I assume he maybe put that in uh, before we started explaining it. But uh, yeah, so basically you say, I want to make sure it's at least this high of a grade. Yeah, you see and the pop up there? If I want it to be a 7.5 or higher, I would screen it for a 7.5. And you can also do that for the verifications. Yes, so if it's a 7.0, they won't grade it. And then like we just got through explaining, you can do it for signatures. But if you come over here, it gives you your summary. This is a modern tier. Thanks to me putting in the age and everything here, it already did that automatically for me. Now, if I want it to go faster, I can do some of these other things. Of course, that'll make the price jump way up. But if I keep it modern, the processing tier is $18 to grade. $40 for both of the signatures to get verified and the pressing cost 12. So I'm in this one book, a total of $70. And you would save that and you go to this screen, double check your stuff. And then you would go to checkout. Now check out here, I put in a dummy address, Big Wheel, 123 Main Street. We put, yes, we wanna to go to a physical address, not picked up at CBCS office or their pressing office. And for those of you who don't know, the pressing office is the office that does the grading. That's in Dallas, Texas. The pressing office where you get all the pressing done for CBCS is in Clearwater, Florida. Which is where CBCS used to be. Yes, now they do have plans on merging them, but as of right now, they're still separate. So I'm gonna click this dummy address here and then use selected address. And the next wow. thing you have to do is choose a payment method. Well, you have multiple options, and I'm going to choose cash, but you can use a card, personal check, or money order. I'll also point out that uh, I'm not sure about CVCS, but I know CGC will not ship to PO boxes, I believe. Right. I have no idea on that myself. And uh, T TJ says screening is a waste of money. If you don't have a ballpark grade, you shouldn't be sending it in. Uh, I agree with him. Meet me there. But... Uh, I will share this as an example, which I like, guess not the end of the world, but uh, if I can find it. I sent this in, and this is another thing which I hate that, well, not hate, but I think it's kind of silly that CBCS does. Uh, you can see that little check mark. That means that it's a 5.5, but it presents much higher than that. So if you look at this book. Um, oh, you're talking I, about the check mark they do? Yeah. I, I thought this was 8.59 maybe. But apparently it has some staining, which you can't see. But they could see, like, with their lights or their black lights or whatever the case may be. So um, go ahead and show them the back where the QR code is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were talking earlier that you have free graders notes with the CBCS. And as long as you have a QR scanner, you can scan that code that he has right there that he's showing you. And you have access to full graders notes on any book. But I mean, if you look at this book, it, I, I thought it was pretty clean. So this is an example where uh, I got hit way harder than I expected. So, uh, you know, maybe I could have been a little more done more due diligence in looking at what the grade would be before I sent it in. You know, it's not a valuable enough book where I um, would have wanted to pay for uh, screening either way, but it can't happen. So if you're sending in, you know, something that's super valuable, like uh, what you think is a high grade 181 or, you know, uh, an ASM one or something like that, uh, it, I suppose it's possible that you might go for screening, but I would say few and far between where you want to use it. Yeah, but I, I have to say, I, I do agree though with the, oh, whoop, wrong one. I do agree with TJ though. Uh, odds are that you won't have that happen. So I wouldn't worry about it myself. I, I never even considered it. But uh, anyway, the last thing here for CBCS is you got to review the order and your shipping speed. So I drop this down. Can you see all the choices? Uh, I see 
So it says select shipping, but I don't see. Okay, well, none of you can apparently see the drop down box, but it has about 10 different ways you can ship it to you at different costs. The cheapest is FedEx ground at $23, and the highest is overnight at $129. And the one I would recommend is UPS, or excuse me, United States Postal Service registered mail at $35.10. Now that should, that should be notated that that is the shipping speed and not that does not change your grading speed. So you're right. not paying for- Now over here on the order summary, you can have it all explained to you. Your item, everything that has to do with grading and pressing is gonna be $70. Shipping and handling all said and done is $35 and a dime. So your order total to get this one book done with the verification, the grading, the pressing, everything, it's going to cost $105.10. Now that, that may seem high for shipping and handling, but as Big Will pointed out, you do need to ship it to two different places for the, uh, the pressing that he's having done. So that's why that is higher than what typically one book would cost to be shipped. And it's also 100% fully insured and it's also registered mail from the post office, which automatically costs you more than like a FedEx delivery. Yeah. And that folks is it. That's how you do CBCS. Now, does anyone want us to go through real quick the different prices and tiers for CBCS like we did with CGC? Well, I really think we should, if we do it for one, we might as well yeah. do it for the other, right? Only take a minute or so, it's worth checking out. Let's see. I think it's under. Oh, that's the guidelines. Excuse yeah, under me. grading. Or no, it's under pricing. Sorry. You go to grading, scroll, and then it's yeah, down. It's getting a little crazy here. Pricing. There we go. Yep. All right. So this is bouncing a lot. So I am sorry for that. Now, all turnaround times are estimates. Of course, they all say that. Here are your choices, folks. You have the modern, which is just like CGC, 1975 to present. Although if you notice, CBCS has a free membership. I am a member of CBCS, but I pay nothing. So I get this for 16 bucks, which is even cheaper than my membership cost uh, for using modern on CGC. Yeah. And it's valued up to 200 $50 rather than 200 for CGC. So there are pluses for CBCS, but there's also minuses and CGC has the same things. It's just different. Then you have the expanded consumer and uh, two day modern, quick stream, rapid. Two day modern is a, uh, one thing you could do is if you're okay spending $36 or 40 bucks on a book to get graded and it's modern, if you're willing to spend 36 bucks instead of like 18 or 16, it'll be done in two days. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then of course you have the one day any year and it's done like uh, CGC where it's all percentages and all. Uh, you also have the same with CGC uh, if you want to do a reholder because you got a crack in your case or something like that. I do that. Pass is a dollar cheaper if you're a member, so nine instead of ten. Whoop de doo. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the stuff like that adds up if you're like a dealer and you're yeah. doing a ton. Uh, I and here, the, the re re um, reholdering CGC does well. There's two books I need to submit for that, and CGC also does the crossover tier, which I was going to talk about. Uh, but we can do that at the end if you want. Yeah, we can do that here in just a second. And of course, the signature add-on, if it's witnessed, like I said earlier, it's five dollars. Uh, if you're getting it verified, in other words, it's unwitnessed, it's twenty-five per book for the first signature, fifteen dollars for each additional. Then you can do fancy things like a slideshow, an image, and now oh, went too far. Your pricing for your pressing is right here, and as you can see, it's a. Uh, People say pressing is expensive, and yes, it is. But if you're paying per book, which I think even most local pressers, uh, they charge you per book too, right? I don't think this is that much more expensive than with them on things like modern. Yeah. But on the older books, it goes up with CGC and CBCS, where I don't think it does with 
local guys. But if you're just doing modern, it's not that different. And I'll just leave that up for a second. You guys can all look at it and then we'll call it done and mention the crossover service. And if anyone has any other lingering questions or anything. All right. We are ready, sir. Explain so, crossover service. It is so only is done it, by CGC. Only done by CGC. Go ahead. And I believe you can only do it with CBCS or PGX. If you have a book already. Correct? They don't. They wouldn't do like Halo grading or some of the other smaller ones. Uh, but it, it says if it's by another grading company that yeah. is not them, I think they do it. Most of most everyone will be sending in a CBCS or PGX. Yeah. But like Halo is an actual company. I don't know if they would recognize like EGS, Tony right. Tremetta. I don't yeah. know if they do him or not. But So, for example, this is a book I'm considering doing. Uh, it's my giant size X-Men 6.5. Uh, it's in the old CG, CBCS label, which I hate, so I want to get a new one anyway. But the book has some you know, dirt on the back. It looks like it could benefit from a press that has some um, kind of some wavy stuff on the cover. So I've considered resubmitting this. Now, previously to a few months ago, you would just have to send this in and pay full cost uh, they would crack it for you, so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. But they came up with the bright idea of trying to turn the whole world CGC and said, hey, if you want to get your uh, books from a different grading company turned into a CGC book, we will charge you less than we would normally charge you. So it is a lower cost if it is already graded by another company. Uh, so you can send this in and say, I want this crossover graded. And... Um, they will crack it for you. They will regrade it. You can have it pressed. Um, and then they will encapsulate it in their CDC uh, case and you save some money that way. Uh, you do have to submit a completely separate order. You cannot do that. And like on your um, the order you just submitted, you couldn't also add that book to be crossover graded. You'd have to submit a completely separate order. <laughs> uh, yeah, DCG, D DGC, sorry. Yeah, that's funny. But anyway, uh, that 9-4 you sent me, that CBCS of the Wolverine number one, I'm thinking just to try it and see yeah. how that crossover service goes. I've never done it. I think I might do it with that book, see what happens. Yeah, as far as I know, it was never pressed. So, um, I don't, I don't, I didn't look at it closely enough to see if you could bump it. But I don't know if it's even worth it for that book because it's you know, it's worth it to me for that book sure to get a, to get a nine, possibly a nine six maybe. I don't, I don't think it'd pull a nine eight. But the other yeah, thing that I know it won't pull a nine eight. I looked at the spine and everything, but that's okay. Well, there, anyway. Uh, there is a, I would say accurate uh, stereotype that CBCS grades harder than CGC. I would agree with that stereotype. Um, so if you got a, a much economics and comics, I I have seen some of his videos. Yeah, have I you seen one where he did, did all the grading companies? I mean yeah. that that's a strange experiment because like you can look at books and they might look identical to you. But uh, did he submit the same book? I don't know. He submitted the exact same book to all three companies. He got a 9.2 off-white white from PGX. It was a Spider-Man um, 301, by the way. Mm -hmm. He got a 9.2 white pages from CGC. And he got a 8.5 CBCS off-white to white pages. And he sent it to Tony Trombetta at EGS, a local guy in the community who's uh, doing his own grading service. And he put it at a 7.5 when he okay. graded. Um, yeah, so it, uh, uh, but there, I have heard many instances of like 9.6s getting bumped to 9.8s at CGC. Uh, so I, I think that CBCS is just a little, 
a little uh, harder on their grading. And that's why some people like them because they say like a CG, CBCS 9.8 is uh, a, a more true 9.8 a lot of times. And I certainly have seen CGC 9.8s so where I'm like, there, this shouldn't be a 9.8. Yeah. Well, all right then, man. I guess uh, if anyone has any questions or anything we want to take a look at real quick in the chat, get yes. it in now. d Rung says, I've done a few cross Are we missing anything, Alec? Uh, D Runk just said I've done a few cross grading submissions CBCS to CGC both went really well so there you go yeah I highlighted that that's uh that that's good for me and <laughs> you, you do it uh, we'll give the chat a few seconds I'm on the Streamyard chat so it yeah it's behind a little bit but uh, is there anything we're forgetting here oh we got a big comment. I know TJ is CGC only, but I hope others consider using both companies. I think CGC dominating is dominating the busy is, right, business. Yeah, dominating the business is ultimately bad for collectors, many competition and grading. I completely agree. I mainly use CGC, but I always use CBCS for any kind of signature work. And uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I would agree there. Anything where there's a monopoly, I mean, you look at Diamond, it's not great for us. Um, so it, as long as, if, if CBCS gets fully run out of business, I, I don't really see PGX as like a viable competitor. So CGC can like do whatever the heck they want, charge us whatever they want. Um, yeah. And uh, other people like EGS, I mean, bless him, but he is no not, way not a, not a, competition. a player no. yet. He could be. I'm not going to down, man. He, 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 hey, he, 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 he keeps hitting the grindstone and and keeps improving his uh, his product. You know, obviously, uh, plenty of small companies have taken down the Goliaths. Uh, but yeah, if if you're looking at right now, CBCS went out of business. Um, it's CGC would just have free reign, it, which you know, if they didn't change their prices and they didn't change their service and it just turned into their only option. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because they do provide a quality service, but uh, you know, it's just, it's a dangerous game. Well, we don't have anything in the chat there. Uh, so I guess we're done. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody in the chat for participating. Some of you for the second time today. Uh and uh, hopefully, Alec, we got rid of those issues and we are good to go. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear anything on my end while we were doing it and while we were testing it out, I definitely did. So fingers crossed it doesn't show up in the replay. Well, we'll find out here in a little while, or at least I will. <laughs> so catch you guys later. Thanks for coming, Alex. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye.